Our problem is that the world has only begun shifting. We've raised the temperature of the planet a little more than a degree Celsius in Canada, about 1.7 degrees. Um, on current trends, the world will raise its temperature even if everybody kept the agreements they made in Paris, about three and a half degrees Celsius, in Canada considerably more than that. That's enough to make sure if we let that happen that we can't have civilizations like the ones that we've been used to. Those are the stakes. Um, so let me now tell you the second force that's important here, and this is the good news. In that 30 years, though politicians did not do their jobs, engineers did do their jobs. And the um, level of remarkable innovation has been fantastic. We now have, well, the last decade, we've watched the price of a solar panel fall 90%, wind turbines the same thing, so that the cheapest way to produce energy around the world now is to do it renewably and to store it in batteries and. Um, um, that's a very new development, but a very profound one. What it means is, <clears throat> if we wanted to solve the biggest problem humans have ever faced, we're capable of doing it. 30 years ago, even 20 years ago, we didn't really know what would replace the coal and gas and oil that we had to get rid of. Now we do know. If we wanted to, we could. It would not be simple. It would not be free. It would not... It would require enormous focus and discipline from our political leaders, but it is well within the realm of the possible. So that leads to the third and most important thing. If we're facing the biggest problem in the world, and if we know more or less what we have to do, the question becomes why we're not doing it any faster than we're doing it. And that's the part that took me a long time to figure out, because perhaps because I'm a little dim, I don't know. Um, I spent the first 15 years after having written this first book about climate change, convinced in my own mind that we were engaged in an argument, because I think I'm a writer and I'm a teacher, and so that's how we think about the world. And my thought was, well, we just need to produce more books, have more symposiums, some more articles. Eventually, the powers that be will take the obvious hint and do what needs to be done. As it turns out, that's not precisely the way that the world works. It took me a while to figure it out, but at a certain point, I concluded that we had long since won the damn argument. The scientists were unambiguous and clear in their warning about what was coming. We'd won the argument, but we were losing the fight because the fight wasn't about data and reason. The fight's what fights are always about. It was about money and power and the fossil fuel industry, which is the richest industry that human beings have ever created, had enough money to make sure that change was not coming. Now, I intuited that, but really it took great investigative reporting over the last five or six years to really demonstrate precisely how true it was. What we've learned over the last five or six years from whistleblowers, from archives, from remarkable reporting, is that the big oil companies knew everything there was to know about climate change in the 1980s. Uh, look, Exxon was the biggest company in the world. It had great scientists on the staff. Its product was carbon. They set out to understand how it worked. And by the early 1980s, their scientists were telling their executives <coughs> quite plainly how much and how fast it was going to warm, and the executives were believing them. Exxon began building every drilling rig it built to compensate for the rise in sea level that it knew was coming. What they did not do was tell any of the rest of us. Instead, they spent billions of dollars building the architecture of deceit and denial and disinformation that kept us locked for 30 years in an utterly sterile debate about whether or not global warming was real. A uh, debate that both sides knew the answer to when the debate began, it's just one side was willing to lie about it, okay? And the power of that lie is demonstrated by the fact that the current occupant of the White House believes that climate change was a hoax invented by the Chinese, a theory so odd that if you heard someone muttering about it on the public bus, you would get up and change seats, okay? <laughs> but that's the 
place where we now are in our planet thanks to that work.